What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbridge Garage and this is the road to horsepower. Now when we left off, we was making around 18 horsepower with this engine and almost 14 foot pounds of torque. So those are some pretty good gains from this engine. This started life as a 212 Predator Hemi engine. And we started with the Hemi because a lot of people seem to be using that in the forums and on the Facebook groups. And then we evolved it throughout by putting part at a time and gaining horsepower as we went and showing you guys the results of each of these parts. So where this engine sits, we have a billet side cover. We have a billet flywheel from EC, which has 34 degrees of timing. We have EC's stroker kit that turns this into a 223cc engine. So we have a forged rod that 58 millimeter crankshaft, and then it came with the Wildcat flat top piston. Now a Hemi already had a flat top piston. It was just this flat top piston was suited for this stroker kit to do some clearance and inside the block. Then we have a 308 cam from Dino Cams. We also paired that with a set of chromoly push rods, some 1.2 ratio rockers, then we have stainless steel valves in our Hemi head and we hand ported this thing. So we did run dual valve springs for that ratio rocker and 308 combo. And we did have to cut some valve uh, spring seats in the head. And if you guys remember, we did break into the intake port, but we got that patched up. But we're making good power with this engine. But this is about as far as you can go with a Hemi style head. The problem with the Hemi is the valves come in towards the piston at an angle. So the corner of the valves, the lower corners, are susceptible to hitting the piston if you get too much lift or you get the perfect amount of timing on your cam you can run into issues and you can only have so big of valves the bigger the valves the more uh, this issue can show its ugly face so we're going to switch over to a wildcat wc 946 head this is a used head that we pulled off another engine from the road to horsepower series this has big valves and it also is hand ported and it's going to be a huge gain in flow compared to this hemi head that's on this engine we're also going to be installing some dual 32 pound valve springs and some titanium retainers and to do that we are going to have to cut the spring pockets a little deeper about 40 thousandths of an inch deeper so we don't get cool bind uh, but that's going to be uh, mated really nice with our 1.2 ratio roller rockers from ec carburetors the reason we're going with 1.2s instead of 1.3s is we want to let the head do the work and show us the horsepower gain so we have 1.2 ratio rockers already in this engine so it's going to be the same lift. We're just going to have a bigger valve and a better flowing head. And we should see the results of a Hemi versus non-Hemi head in about the same stage. Now you can get Hemi heads with a little bit bigger valves, but it's not big enough to really make an entire episode over. We will be doing a head showdown very soon where we try the Shredder head, the Wildcat head, Hemi, non-Hemi, all types of heads, uh, all in a row on the same engine to see which head makes more horsepower with one single combination of cam and engine build. We're not gonna be switching out the cam, so stay tuned to that. We're gonna keep our same 24 millimeter Makuni flat side. We could go up a little bit at maybe a 26 mil because of our valve size on this WC946 head, but we wanna keep the carb the same. I really like these carbs for drivability. They're my all time favorite carb. A PWK24 or a Makuni24, you can save a lot of money by buying the PWK version but we have the Makuni, so we're just gonna stick with that. So uh, we'll get to pulling this head off and we're gonna set this on the shelf for a later use uh, on the channel. And we'll get our new WC946 prepped with those new spring pockets cut in. We're just using a standard drill and we'll show you how to do it with a set of calipers. It's very simple. You just gotta take your time when cutting these because you don't wanna cut too deep and cut into the intake port or you know, you'll know you cause yourself an even bigger issue. Uh, so we'll get this thing put all together and see if we can make more horsepower with a non-Hemi versus a Hemi head. First, we of course have to remove the valve cover, the head, head gasket, and start prepping our new head. I can now pull out the factory rockers from the Wildcat head and remove the spring retainers and keepers using our valve tool from rbgcarts.com, linked in the video's description.
With the valves removed, we can take a measurement of the stock spring pockets so we know how much we're going to be cutting. The proper way to do this is with a mill, but as long as you take your time with a drill and measure often, you can do it with a simple hand drill. We're going to be using EC Carburetor's Spring Seed Cutters. These are available in five millimeter as well as five and a half, depending on your valve size. These are linked in the video's description. With the spring pockets cut and the head cleaned, I can remove the old rocker studs because we won't need them for the roller rockers. This is a good time to clean and lap the valves and make sure they have a good seal in the head. I use a little bit of scotch Brite with the valve in a drill to quickly clean the valves before lapping them. This will make them look as good as new in a few seconds. Use some valve grinding compound around the edge of the valve and install into the head. Use a suction tool to spin the valve mating the two surfaces. Once done, make sure to clean all the compound from the valve and the head thoroughly to remove all that grinding compound. You can see the gray colored strip around the edge. This tells us we're gonna have a good seal on this valve. Alrighty, so the titanium retainers won't work on the set that I got. My bad. Got the wrong parts. But I did have some aluminum uh, retainers on the shelf, so these will work for this particular valve. The problem is, is this particular valve has a really small end on it, and they set too deep in the titanium. So we'll keep the titaniums for another build. Not a big deal. It doesn't affect it whatsoever. Um, they don't technically have to have titanium. So we can install these used billet boys, just like we did the titanium. And then uh, we can start reassembling it onto the engine. Okay. Bam. So we'll repeat this on the other side. We are gonna use our lash caps. Make sure to use those because it'll keep our geometry right of our rocker. So I'm gonna get the other one sawed. We can put this on the head, on the block. Torque the head down to 20 foot pounds. We can install our push rods, lash caps, and new rockers using blue lock types on the rocker bolts. I actually forgot the lash cap, so I had to slip them in before setting the valve lash. Once everything is installed, make sure to check the spring gap on your valve springs at full lift. You want around 40 thousandths to 50 thousandths gap in your valve spring. I did have to cut the exhaust guide another 20 thousandths off camera to make this correct. Make sure you lube your valve train and we can get the engine on the dyno and see how much power we made with this new head. All right, so we have the now non-Hemi Predator Stage 5 engine, we're going to call it. So, just to let you guys know, we have a 308 cam. We have 
two ratio rockers chromoly push rods we have the wildcat 18 cc big valve cnc ported head we have a 24 millimeter macuni steel we're going to keep running that carb we have 34 degrees of timing in the ec flywheel we have the forged rod with the stroker kit so it has the piston the crank and the rod from ec so this should make a big i'm really excited about this this should make a big gain so okay Yeah, it's burning that oil out. It's warm this hog up. This gas tank rattles like that.
All right, guys, so we made 0.8 foot pounds of torque and we made uh, a little, you know, 0.3 horsepower. I thought it would honestly be the other way around. I thought we'd make more horsepower from this head than torque. But um, so this engine's making really good power. It does vibrate like the Dickens. I think I need to uh, do a little bit of balancing. So I think the next episode is we're going to send off the rotating assembly, balance the rotating assembly for us and see what that does on the dyno. There's not a whole lot we can do with this engine other than going to an even crazier head, like even bigger valves or a billet head. We're really at the limit of this engine other than a bunch of fine tweaks that we can do. So we wanna know in the comment section, what do you wanna see done to the original Hemi Predator now turned on Hemi and what you thought of the results that we found. So again, this engine's making right along with the other engines but it took a lot of parts to get it here. Like a Wildcat is making this same torque and we have far less money as well as parts on it. So that's what we're looking at is dollar per horsepower, a Hemi 212 Predator or non-Predator is not really the engine to go with. You're much better off doing something bigger displacement like a Wildcat 223 or a 240. Now we work with EC a lot, but we're also, we work with other companies and we found that the Wildcat 240 and 223 is the best value. I mean, if you add up, look at all our dyno videos, you'll find out for yourself that it is the best dollar per horsepower that you possibly can get. Tillisons are overpriced for what they are. I think you pay too much of a premium where the Wildcat, you can save money where you're gonna spend more on a Tillison. But we wanna know what you wanna see done to this engine next. Uh, what do you thought about this video? We are reading your comments and make sure to check out the links to all the parts we've used throughout this Road to Horsepower series. Uh, we got more to do on this. And it was smoking a little bit on startup. It was almost like the valve seats was leaking. And I remember I punctured a small hole when I ported this head uh, months and months ago is when I forgot it. A tiny pinhole into the port that goes from the head down to the block to let it vent. So that could have sacrificed a very small amount of power, but um, I'm gonna patch that up with some epoxy. That's the only thing when you're porting these engines, you really gotta watch out for that tube. And it's basically where the head, when you're looking at the jud, of the block, you see this small hole at the upper right corner. That port is what allows oil to flow up and the oil vapors to oil the valve train in the engine. And that's what you're prone to breaking into when you're porting these heads. So be really careful in that area. Try not to take off too much material. Uh, same thing we did on our on this Hemi when we put the dual valve springs back in the day. We broke through on the top side. So you always have to watch out around the intake ports on these, but uh, we'll get that fixed and we'll send the rotating assembly off in the next video see what that does because again this thing was vibrating more than i would like to see so uh thank you guys so much for watching make sure to check out the links and check out the other videos on the road to horsepower we love you guys and god bless